I'm Paul Bennett in Millbridge, Maine, located along Maine's Bowl Coast, very close to the U.S. Canadian border. I thought I'd go over some of the tools. I'll explain what I'm using right here. What I'm doing is I stiffen up the frames, I brace them up, I have to start cutting various bevels. To get a whole lot of meat off on, on some of those frames, I can use this power planer. But I don't want to use it very much because it does take off a whole lot of material very quickly and you can make mistakes very, very fast. This happens to be a Makita, but any brand will do. Always lay it on its side, not just a block plane, a hand plane, but even a power plane. Lay it on its side so you don't dull the cutting blades. The other thing is a belt sander, which a little bit later on in the video I'll show you that because I had to change a belt on it. Here's another sander. This is a, a random orbit rotary sander that will also help me take off a lot of material quickly. Then I have my little block plane doing a little bit of fine tuning. But that's okay for the open surfaces on the edges of the frames where I'm going to be uh, doing the bevels and also on the stem. But what about all those little notches for the stringers? See, they also have to be beveled in order to fit the string as properly. You have to, you can get in there, the traditional thing to do is, is a wood chisel. And still has some uses. We'll still be using that. I'm going to use a bevel gauge, of course, for checking the bevels. When I take a, uh, a batten and I stretch it around the, uh, the hull, I can find out what the bevel is at each frame. Just a guideline. All this is is a handle with a blade that you can adjust. That's all it is. But going back to the notches, cutting the bevels in the notches and fine, fine tuning and fitting the stringers and so forth. In addition to this wood chisel, here's another handy tool. This is from Harbor Freight. This is an oscillating multifunction power tool. It's made by a lot of different manufacturers. This just happens to be a Harbor Freight one, which is cheap. It does the job. It has a very thin, thin, fine tooth blade. And there are different types of blades. Here's another blade that'll go on there that fits into really tight little small places. And it just oscillates. It vibrates back and forth at a very high speed. And it slices, it cuts a nice, trim, trimming the wood, nice thin little slice if you have to. Works great. The latest tool that uh, I picked up yesterday is this. Uh, it's called, a, this is also from Haba Freight. And it's called a half inch band file belt sander and has a 180 degree swivel head. Well, there's a little bit of a belt here that spins around. It's a, it's a belt sander, just a very narrow half inch wide belt. You can adjust the angle so if you can use it like this, if it's a tight place, you can angle it like this. There's, a, uh, there's an adjustment screw here so you can lock it into place. So it'll stay that it'll stay that way once you lock it in tight. Okay. They have a lever which releases the tension on the blade when you want to change the blade. And then there's a knob right here for tracking to keep the blade staying right in the center so it doesn't go off one way or the other. You can make that adjustment. Beyond that, you just have your switch. They retail this for 40 bucks, but you use the 20% off coupon, which you can find all over the place. And that drops it down to about 30 bucks. Tight little places, you get those little notches for the stringers. I can get in there, do a little bit of fine tuning if I want. As far as belts go, Harbor Freight only sells an assortment. It's a sanding belt set for about five bucks. It's, it's an assortment. You get uh, 80 grit, 120, 180, 240. I need, I need coarser grits to get down there in a hurry. Well, this is all we have, but it's an 18 inch belt. It's half inch by 18 inch. Well, they have another power sander that uses a three inch by 18 inch. So the length is the same, 18 inch. So what you can do is, and this is a, a guy at Harbor Freight that happens to own one of these and he built a strip built kayak. This is what he did. He told me about it. Great idea. Just buy a pack of these wider belts. This is a 40 grit, is what I want. You just measure over half an inch, 
you got some heavy duty cutters or a razor blade or whatever, you just go ahead and cut off a strip and now you've got a, you've got a half inch belt at, at uh, this squatty grit. And you've got a number of them, you just cut quite a few off there and you get two belts in the package. It's the same price, same price as this uh, assortment pack. So that's a good deal. So these are the basic tools that you'll see me use outside. I hope this is informative because if you're going to build a boat like this, these are all tools, while you can get away without them, these are very cool to have and this will save you a whole lot of time and make life a whole lot easier. I have this old Ryobi belt sander and it's something that I haven't even used it in years, I hardly ever use it. This kind of thing, a belt sander can be very aggressive, it's kind of crude, it's bulky, it's not a very precise tool to use can take off a whole lot more material than you want to and it can cause problems in a hurry. Very rarely have much use for it. However, when I start shaping the bevels uh, on the transom, the edges of the transom, sides and, and the bottom, and also at the stem and the, uh, the sides of all the main frames on the boat, this is probably the best way to go because I could use a block plane, but many of the mainframes, as well as the transom and the collision bulkheads, those are all plywood, and cutting edge grain with a plane, a hand plane, is kind of tricky. Uh, razor sharp blades will do it nicely, but the problem is plywood has a tendency to dull the blade very, very fast. You have to keep stopping and taking it out and resharpening. This should save me a lot of time. However, this old belt, which is probably several years old, I think it was, might have been an 80 or 100 grit, that's not going to cut the mustard. Just be wasting my time. Usually a belt sander has a lever, and this one right here, that I think will, yep, that releases the tension. Releases the tension so I can take this old belt off. Went to the big orange box store and I was able to get a couple of these 36 grit belts, so very, very aggressive. Uh, but these bevels are not going to be finished anyway. I want to leave them rough because that way there they'll grip the adhesive, whether it's epoxy or the uh, marine type structural adhesives. Whatever you use, it increases the surface area, gives you a stronger bond. So I'll only use this 36 grit and I won't have to go to any finer grits. All I have to do is slip this on. This is, and I only bothered to film the uh, video changing this belt because I know there's a lot of people out there that don't have a belt sander or they've never used one. It's not really difficult to use, it's just that it's a bit unwieldy and you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. You just do a little bit of the time and keep checking your work because it's easy to go way too far with it. You don't want to take too much off. You have to be very, very careful. And I didn't notice any direction. Some belts, oh this does have a direction, okay. Let me go make sure that I got the right direction on here. I should have checked that before I slipped it on, but I got busy talking and wasn't paying that close attention. So let's see. Okay, that wasn't the right direction. Okay. There are little arrows on the inside of the belt that, that indicate the direction of travel. Some of the real cheaper belts may not have that, but uh, this is a, a better quality belt, a little more expensive, and it does have. Now if you put it on backwards, the belt's not going to come apart on you right away, but it will eventually come apart and it will significantly reduce the life of the belt. It won't hurt the sander itself, but you just ruin your belt. And if you bought a good one and you paid a lot of money for it, you want it to last as long as possible. All that's left now is tracking. I'll plug this in, there's a knob here, a knob here on the top, and if you turn it one way or the other, the belt will either shift to one side or the other, and the idea is you just want to keep it tracking right in the middle, right on the drum. If it's going to one side or the other, you just want it to come back a little bit, and you do it dynamically while the belt is running. You just hold the switch on, go ahead and turn the knob until you have it running nice and centered, centered and uh, that does the trick. Perfect!
Okay, the wind's died down a little bit, so maybe you can hear me. You see what I did here? After I cut this, uh, this bevel, I took a cleat, just a, a 2 by 3 ran it through the table saw. I couldn't quite get the angle I needed. There was too much angle, and the table saw only goes over so far. But I cut close, and then I just edged it up, temporarily clamped it in position. And then what I'll do is, once this is all glued and it sets up, I'll go back over it with the plane and the sander and match the angle with the transom, that bevel. I'll cut out a little notch right out of here to fit the keelson. And keelson goes right to the edge of the transom. And this cleat will help hold that keelson in place. I'll be gluing it as well as screwing it in place and it'll be good and solid. And of course when the bottom's on it with all the epoxy resin and the fiberglass it's going to be very very strong. Right now I just have some temporary screws and they'll act as locators because I'm going to take this off. I just had it clamped in order to put the screws in holding it in position. And now I'll take these out and when I put the glue on I go to put it back on. I just carefully put the screws in. I can, I can feel them as they find the hole if I hold it in roughly the right position and that'll help align them so it goes right back in the, where I have it right now. And then uh, I'll probably add a few more screws to act as clamps and whatever clamps I can find until the, uh, the glue sets up. And I'm using that uh, Gorilla Glue construction adhesive that it comes out of a caulking tube. That seems to work pretty good. It'll go down to 40 degrees and right now it's about 59 degrees. I don't think it's going to it's going to go down into the 50s. I don't think it'll go much lower than that tonight. Enough for it to cure before it gets really cold and that nor'easter hits us. Take these screws out later. These are just temporary because I don't want to use the planer or the sander with these screws in there, so I'll be removing them. And just let that set up. I'll carve out a notch. There's a little bit of a bevel along the sides of the transom, so I left some material proud that'll just get cut off along with uh, this being beveled. There'll be another cleat that runs along the inside of the transom on each side here. That'll give some meat for the side panels to screw into. I was able to get this cleat sanded down to the same bevel as the transom so that they match. I did a whole bunch of bracing today. I spent a lot of time stiffening up all the different frames and bulkheads, getting them good and rigid so they won't move and that everything is plumb. Then I started to fit the keelson. The keelson, it takes quite a bit of bend, so rather than try to bend a solid 2x4, I'm going to laminate the, uh, the keelson. And what I did is I took some 2x4s and I ripped them right down the middle on, on its edge. Once I have this fitted in place, this is the keelson right here, a part of it. I'll have it all glued and fastened at every frame. I have to cut out a notch right here in this cleat so that this uh, keelson will fit into it along with some glue and some screws. And then I'll take another one and laminate it right across the top. So I'll have two of them sandwiched together and uh, then it'll have, be, have the proper thickness. And I'll use a marine adhesive. I'd like to use epoxy if I can find an open window of uh, warm enough weather so the epoxy will set up. So that's where I'm at now. I wanted to be much further along. I wanted to have the keelson permanently installed. I've had a lot of weather and I've run out of time. So that's where I'm at. So we're